Prophet had returned from Khaybar. All the Muslims are victorious. Ali has annihilated the opposition. At this moment, the Prophet sees from a distance Ja'far and he makes the most beautiful statement made. He says, I do not know which one to be more happy with. The victory of Ali at Khaybar or the return from Abyssinia of Ja'far. What a line. That shows you how much he loves those two. I don't know which one to be more happy with. Ali's victory at Khaybar or the return from Abyssinia of Ja'far. Straight away he hugged Ja'far and they began to cry and cry for years they haven't seen each other. Then he said, you know what Ja'far, I'm going to give you a present better than any present anyone can give you ever. Now Ahlul Bayt, when they give presents, we always imagine presents as some material thing. When Rasulullah told Fatima Zahra, I'll give you a present, what did he give her? The tasbih of Fatima, isn't it? It's always a spiritual present. He said, Ja'far, I'm going to give you a present, which is the best present anyone can give you. He said, what is it? He said, I'm going to give you a salah, which if you recite it, all of your sins are forgiven. Salah Ja'far al-Tayyar. Many of us would have heard of Salah Ja'far al-Tayyar in our life. Even in many communities, I always mention this, in many communities, if someone's prayer goes a bit fast or goes a bit slow, just a bit slow, because you know, you find that if the prayer goes, for example, let's say two and a half minutes, because that's too long now for salah, all of a sudden people shout out, what are you doing? You're praying salah Ja'far al-Tayyar? Because the idea is salah Ja'far al-Tayyar is a very long prayer, isn't it? Like you only have to recite Surat al-Zilzal and Adiyat about 199 times. But he says to him, whoever recites this Salah, Allah will forgive all of his sins. And if he does it every day, Allah will ensure that on the day of judgment, there is no sin on him whatsoever. This Salah Ja'far al-Tayyar until today, <clears throat> many recite it. And until today it has helped many. It was in honor of Ja'far's return from Abyssinia that Rasulullah gave him this present. And that's why only a year later, the Holy Prophet had sent an ambassador when he was spreading Islam. He had sent an ambassador to where the narrations mentioned to us that straight after Khaybar, before he even sent that ambassador, when Ja'far returned to the mosque of the Prophet in Medina, Abu Huraira narrates a very interesting hadith. Abu Huraira says, we used to love Ja'far al-Tayyar. People said to him, why? Abu Huraira used to sleep on the ledge by the Prophet's grave. Have you seen by the Prophet's grave, there's a suffa. They call them Ashab al-Suffa. The ledge, you normally see two men standing there, yes? Ledge by his grave, and there's normally two men standing there. That ledge, the companions who were poor used to sleep there. When they wanted food, they'd come to the ledge, they'd stay there until someone tells them, for example, like the prophets, I'll give you some food, come here if you're hungry, come with me. Abu Huraira says, we used to love Ja'far. Why? Because people knew how generous Ja'far was. You know, Abu al-Masakin, the father of the needy, anyone who's miskin, he gives. So he says, what we used to do is we used to stay there and we used to ask Ja'far a question, any question. Random question, uh, you know, Hajji uh, Ja'far, we want to ask you a question, for example, oh, great Ja'far, he's like, go ahead. Um, you know, there's a question about, you know, like, uh, like a legal question, we're not sure if this is halal or haram. Whoever it was, he'll say to them, why don't you come home, have dinner, and we'll discuss it. Abu Huraira says what we started doing, even if we didn't have a question, we just tell him we have a question because we know there's a big dinner at the end in his house. Sometimes that makes you wonder how people approach you as well on other things. So you find that Abu Huraira says, Wallah, any issue that would come up, any issue, he would straight away say, listen, why are you asking me here? Let's go home and have dinner and then we'll discuss. Abu Huraira said we'd go towards his house and in the back of our head we think we can't wait for his wife's food and let him talk and talk and talk about the greatness of knowledge while we're munching and munching and munching. So, he used to be known for this attribute, for this trait, and that's why when Rasulullah sent an ambassador to the Romans to bring them towards Islam, the ambassador by the name of Harith, they ended up killing Harith. It was very unusual for the Prophet to send an ambassador and they kill him. Normally the ambassador is told, listen, we're not interested in Islam, go home. But this ambassador was killed. When Rasulullah heard his ambassador to the Romans was killed, 
the Prophet was very much aggrieved. And he said, I will not accept these people killing my ambassadors. I have sent a man with respect. I have gone to send them the message of Islam. Why do they behead him and kill him? Why don't they just send him home? He said, get the soldiers ready. These people are not people I'm going to sit back and watch oppress others. So he said, who is ready to fight on this jihad? Ja'far came to me and said, Ya Rasulullah, Badr was Ali, Uhud was Ali, Khandaq was Ali, Khaybar Ali, please allow me. For I want to come near the taste of martyrdom. I want to taste martyrdom. The Holy Prophet said to him, Ja'far, will you lead the army of 3,000 soldiers? He said to him, yes. Where's the battle? He said, in an area called Mu'tah, in Jordan. Those of you who have done ziyarah of Ja'far al-Tayyar in Jordan, the area of Mu'ta, he said to him, that area, go towards there. You are in charge. If the banner falls from you, and you know the banner is important, isn't it? In Islam, when a person holds a banner, it shows that we're still strong. The moment the banner falls, then you know that you're in a predicament. As in any time, a banner, which is the flag, as soon as the flag falls, then you know. That if you're the leader of that army, you know now it's difficulty because the backbone of your army is now broken. So he had the banner. When he had the banner, he said, if you fall, then Zayd takes the banner. If you, Zayd falls, then Abdullah ibn Rawaha takes the banner. They went, the Roman soldiers had 12,000. They had 3,000. I tell you, Abdullah ibn Umar narrates, I have never seen a performance in the battlefield like the performance of Ja'far on that day. He said, and you notice that the sons of Abu Talib, when they're on a battlefield, they are the most ferocious warriors. He said he went through the Roman army. They were amazed at the prowess of this man as he was fighting. And you know how old he was on that day? 39, 40. Still young. 39, 40 years of age. He said he went through the Roman army one by one. And they recognized that a man like him, you can't fight one-on-one. -on -one. A great soldier, you can't fight him one-on-one. -on -one. And they detested him as well because they could see he was piercing through the army. They surrounded him. He said they shot 53 arrows on his body. <clears throat> How many? 53. That when they collected his body later on, these Muslims are looking there like, what is this? It's like a hedgehog on the ground. 53 arrows on his body. But do you know, a great soldier, even if you keep piercing him with arrows, the main thing for him is to keep the banner high. Isn't it? You try and keep the banner high. Because if the banner is high, even though you've got arrows, then your fellow soldiers can still see the flag is up. He tried to keep the banner with his right hand. Someone came from behind and chopped his right hand. And then he tried to keep the banner with his left hand. And now these arrows are piercing more into him. Someone chopped the left hand. Now without hands, he was in a predicament. And he fell towards the ground. And they all come and began to attack him. In other words, he had his two hands. By the end of the battle, his two hands had gone from him. The Holy Prophet, what did he do? The Holy Prophet was in Medina. The Holy Prophet at Salat al-Fajr, some narrations mention, he said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. The companion said to him, Ya Rasulullah, what's wrong? He said, I've just been informed that Ja'far, son of Abu Talib, has been killed. They said to him, Ya Rasulullah, how do you know? How do you know? He replied by saying, do not worry. When the report comes back, then you'll be able to verify that he was killed. Not only has he been killed, his hands have been chopped. I now leave me now with Fatima al Zahra, he said, because we want to go to the house of Asma to console her and her children. Do you know how hard it is for a lady to hear that her relative has had his hands cut? As in, you say someone died naturally, it hurts you. But to hear that the hands have been cut, savagery. He entered, you know Rasulullah does something beautiful. As soon as he enters, he sees Abdullah, son of Ja'far, husband of Bibi Zainab, at the time was very young. He comes and he plays with his head, pats him. 
When later he's asked, why did you pat? He said, for every hair of an orphan that you pat, Allah gives you light on the day of judgment. He patted Muhammad, he patted Aun. At this moment, what happened? Asma walked in. Ya Rasul Allah, what's the news? He said to her, Asma, inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'un. She began to cry. She said, Ya Rasul Allah, where's Jafar? All of you know where I'm heading. Ya Rasul Allah, where's Ja'far? <laughs> because you know, she had remained loyal to him in Africa. So she traveled the world with him. It's difficult, it's really difficult to lose someone like that. <laughs> he said to her, Asma, inna lillah wa inna alayhi raja. They killed him. She said, how? Oh Allah, give patience to Umm al-Baneen when they told her how. <clears throat> he said to her, they cut the right and the left. And he had arrows surrounding his body. Arrows. So you know what Rasulullah did at this moment? She began to cry and cry. He said to her, do not worry. I have asked Fatima al-Zahra to cook food and there should be a majlis for Ja'far. Because many people ask me, why is it that we have majalis with food? Where is this from? This is from Ja'far ibn Abu Talib when he was killed. 